Coming up in this episode of Eric the Car Guy. I just can't wait to be on the floor again. This is going sideways. <laughs> Silicone doesn't taste good. Ah. What is that hanging up on? <gasps> yes. That's annoying. Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. How are you? Well, I've got my Integra Type R, my 2000 Integra Type R, apart in pieces here in the garage, and I'm gonna go over what it is that I'm doing. It came up recently that I'm gonna be selling this car, so I wanna make sure that it's as good as it can be before I sell it. I purchased a bunch of parts, actually original equipment factory parts, to recondition this thing back to new light condition, because I think that's the best way. I've seen people take these things to the point where they are, in my opinion, undrivable. I don't want that for this car. I think the Japanese engineers did an excellent job with this car and I just want to pay tribute to that. So let's get started. I started with the engine. That's a brand new valve cover. The one that was on there was junk. Uh, it's got factory Honda plugs in it, which are actually Nippon Denso plugs, a factory distributor cap, a factory rotor, and these are factory wires. Good luck finding them. I also replaced the seals on the uh, VTEC solenoid here, the cam plug here. Also, the distributor has an O-ring behind it that I, I also replaced. I went inside the transmission and put a new limited slip differential in it. Why? Because, well, I was going around turns and I felt that that one was making a little bit of noise, the original equipment one, which I still have. But I went with a wave track, wave track differential for this. There's a whole debacle on that. There's other videos that I can link somewhere for you. But anyway, this got a brand new clutch. It also got a brand new limited slip differential in it. And I went through the transmission and made sure everything was okay. So transmission's good. The engine, in addition to the tune-up parts, also got a valve adjustment. Brand new timing belt water pump and drive belts. All the oil seals were replaced. The cam seals, the crank seal down at the bottom, the rear main seal was replaced. All the oil seals on the engine have been addressed, including a new valve cover gasket underneath this really pretty valve cover. While I was in with the transmission, I also replaced the clutch master cylinder, which is brand new. Those are kind of prone to leaking, so I wanted to make sure that that wasn't an issue. Uh, I also replaced the clutch slave cylinder up here, so all of the clutch hydraulics have been replaced. Uh, the fuel filter is new, also a factory fuel filter, so we're going back to a lot of the factory parts. What you might notice here is a catch can that I am installing or going to be installing during this. Uh, I was just sort of checking fitment. It seems to live here pretty well. I'm gonna plumb these lines to the back of the engine block and I'm gonna eliminate the original PCV system inside of this uh, engine. I feel it's inadequate because at high RPM, I feel like enough pressure builds up inside of this crankcase that it could cause oil leaks. I want the thing to breathe. I talked to a drag racer who's like a, a winning Honda drag racer, and he's the one that taught me about this uh, breather on top of the transmission. He put a larger breather on top of the transmission, and he says he likes to let things breathe. And this guy runs really fast down the track with his Integra. I'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about. So I'm taking that to the next level with the engine. I'm gonna make sure that the engine can breathe through this catch can instead of through this tiny little tube for the uh, PCV system. So we're just gonna get rid of that altogether. It won't necessarily be emissions compliant, but I think the engine will run a lot better as a result. You may note that the front bumper is missing. Well, a couple of weeks ago, my son went out for a test drive with his friend and he came back trying to pull into the garage and he kind of missed and, well, he tagged this part of the bumper. That wasn't the only issue with it. There was some cracked paint on it. So I sent it off to a body shop to have a professional deal with that. So this is being done while I'm doing this mechanical work. So I don't have to deal with the bumper, but when it comes back, it should be probably the nicest looking part of the car. My restoration has continued onto the suspension. I purchased a bunch of original equipment bushings and things for this front suspension and as many parts as I possibly could that were original equipment. I also saved things like these struts. These struts are unobtainium. These are specific to the Type R. They only work on the Type R. They're not leaking. And as you can see, I can compress it and it moves slowly. If it does this, the strut is still good. These things, as I said, are unobtainium. I'm gonna go through, recondition this, clean this up and paint it and make it look like new, uh, despite the fact that it's got about 150,000 miles on it. I'm doing the same thing to the front coil springs, which are not broken, but they're starting to show their age. This stuff peels off. This is really common. I'm gonna go through and, and repaint all of this and clean all this stuff off. This upper strut mount, I got new ones, but I really didn't need to. I didn't realize the Type R used a hardened type bushing up here. I don't think the, the GSR does, but these 
are hard bushings. I'm used to softer rubber bushings being at the top here, and that's why I wanted to recondition them, because over time they can get dry rotted and things like that. And again, I'm trying to make this as like new as possible. I've removed the knuckle here. Um, I'm not messing with the bearing or the ball joint. The ball joint is still, you know, very, like if it doesn't move a lot like this one does, it's still good. So see how slow that's moving? If I was able to just wiggle this around freely, then I'd be replacing it, but I don't really see the need to do that. But again, I'm going through this uh, knuckle here and I'm gonna clean and paint everything and make it look like new. Uh, same with the strut fork that comes down and attaches to the lower suspension. The upper control arms are unobtainium. Although these are still good, I'm gonna replace them with uh, some K-tuned units that allow me to adjust the camber. As long as we're on the topic of sealing oil leaks, I also put a new oil pan gasket on there, which is prone to leak on these cars. This is the front lower support. This, uh, the front suspension attaches to it. Uh, the power steering rack attaches to it. it, lives right in this area. This was well covered in rust and everything. And this is basically where things are headed. I went in with a wire wheel and knocked off all the loose rust. And then I coated the whole thing in Eastwood's rust encapsulator, which should keep the rust from coming back. Along with that theme of reconditioning, this is the power steering rack. Again, these are the inner tie rods. I did not replace these because they still have a lot of, well, stiffness to them, which means they're still good. And on both sides with this, especially on this side. I put new boots on here because the old ones were ripped. And then I just went through and cleaned everything up uh, to make sure, well, it looks new. I removed the driver's seat because I think it's easier to work inside the car with it removed. Uh, next, I'm gonna remove the center console so that I can get the shifter assembly out so that I can recondition all those parts that connect the shifter to the transmission. You might've seen those hanging underneath. I'm also gonna remove the back seat so that I can access the top of the fuel pump so I can disconnect all the parts on top of that uh, so I can drop the fuel tank if I need to, which I may be doing today. Inside of these boxes are all the original equipment parts or most of the original equipment parts that I mentioned. I went through and I inventoried everything and the amount that I have for each one and each part that I'm gonna be replacing. Uh, I actually got extras of some of these parts because I was also gonna do uh, some work on the GSR as well. But one of the things I wanted to point out besides all of these factory parts were these. These are rigid collars, and here's some of the instructions, and they're even in Japanese, but they show some of the locations. Uh, and the reason I'm here with this uh, lower brace is to show you about where they go. So they go in between the body and these braces on the vehicle, and there's some for the front and some for the rear. So this would go into this area. And this helps insulate the uh, suspension components from the rest of the vehicle and actually allows the suspension to work better. Believe it or not, these little things make a big difference. These are some weather seals that I also got, the driver's side door seal. Uh, I'd like to replace that. Um, I also have, oh, the rear view mirrors on these cars tend to degrade. I have a brand new one here from Honda, right there, that I'm gonna be installing. That's worth some money. No, you can't have it. break any of this I am totally screwed because there is no other vehicle with carbon fiber for all this stuff other than the type R so I challenge you to try to find any of these parts because they just simply don't exist anymore To get this lower part of the back seat out to access the top of the fuel pump and possibly also the ABS sensor connectors, which I'm also going to need to disconnect, there is a hidden fastener. You follow this bolster here up in between these two parts and you will feel a 10 millimeter. It'll be easier to see once this is out, but there needs to be, this 10 millimeter needs to be removed in order to take the lower part of the seat out. There it is. Don't forget to push the seat belts through. This 
This is access to the fuel pump. And mine's a little different because mine has a satellite hooked up to it so that I can disable this uh, from space. It's part of the security system. These are great for keeping your Integra safe. It's called the Ghost Lock. It's from JDI. Also, the wiring for the fuel pump is larger gauge. And I swear my fuel pump runs better since I put this system in. But that just leaves us with uh, disconnecting these two fuel lines here. Uh, if I if I drop the fuel tank, which I may end up doing. I've accessed this area to get to the connectors for the ABS sensors because I'm going to need to access them uh, to drop the rear suspension. These are the ABS sensor connectors here, which is what I'm after. see some of my handiwork. I recently did the brakes. The rear suspension, I have come to realize, is probably one of the most important components for the handling of the vehicle. I wasn't taking the rear suspension seriously until I started messing with it and I realized how much of a difference you could get out of a good rear suspension setup. Therefore, I'm going to recondition the entire rear suspension with as many Honda parts as I possibly can and reusing some of the parts like the struts and the springs. Uh, but getting some of this stuff apart is going to be, well, a challenge because the back of the car is usually where it gets the rustiest. So we're going to have some fun. Now, thankfully, I've recently had these brakes apart, as you can see. So this should be fairly straightforward. At all costs, I don't want to stretch or stress out this brake line. It's brand new. On the floor again. I just can't wait to be on the floor again. Life I love is getting dirty with my friends. I just can't wait to get on the floor again. But I do like keeping these tiny little parts together and getting these pins free because a lot of times what happens is this pin will freeze up inside the caliper and you'll see it sitting on the back of the caliper sort of at an angle like that. I take uh, penetrating oil and the same pair of pliers and just work it back and forth until I can finally get it free. Then I take a pair of vice grips and then work this pin free because this pin is another pivot point that needs to be freed up. It's kind of fiddly and takes a bit, but it's worth the effort. I'm taking this whole assembly down. This is the upper control arm here. There are two fasteners that hold it to the body. 14s. And these upper control arms are one of the things I could not find, but that's okay. I'll be replacing these with units that have adjustable camber. They're also a little beefier as well. So even though I'm not lowering the vehicle or anything, I will really be able to dial in the alignment correctly by doing that. There was a rubber boot I had to undo. But this way I can go through these and just clean up these ends and make them pretty again. And so it begins. Well, so I'm gonna go grab some penetrating oil and put it on this fastener here because this, this one here is the nightmare. It laughs at me because it's probably not only rusted inside here, but more importantly, rusted inside the bushing. And that is no bueno. I'm debating on whether or not I should drop the fuel tank now uh, because I did want to do rust coating up on top of it. And it will allow me to get to this fastener with a half inch impact because the way it is now, there's stuff in the way. But if I drop the fuel tank, it's not in the way. So probably what I'll do is I'll keep going around and disconnect everything else that I can on the other side also, and pretty much get it ready to the point where these and these fasteners up here on this bushing are my only concerns.
I'm gonna try to remove the muffler first. If I remove the exhaust now, that's one less component in the way. And I can open things up for the next step, which is going to be the fuel tank. In a pinch, the element can be used as a storage facility. I need the space. I'm removing the fuel tank. Also, the fuel filler neck on this vehicle, you're gonna see is pretty disgusting, but I got a brand new one. It's not a Honda part, couldn't find one. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be doing now. First, I need to remove the cover from it, and then I'm gonna try to disconnect it from the fuel tank. There we are. Pretty gross right there, right? Well, we're changing that out. Ah. Ooh. Okay, okay. Ah. Yes. Yes! Yucky. There we are. Okay. Thank you, penetrating oil. No, 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 don't do that. whole bunch of little things up here that needed disconnecting, including this giant hose. It's for the evaporative system. I want this shield out because it's so in the way of everything. I'm gonna take this strap out because all that's gonna do is like, that's annoying. Okay, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ugh. Yes, go away, go away. Like if we can get these out on both sides, we're pretty much done. But if we can't, that's when it gets interesting. And that, my friends, means I just won the lottery. Because that does not come out. <laughs> okay. More penetrating oil, and you just think about your attitude and what you did wrong. Well, that's what we want, because the rest can come with what we're taking out. Well, appears the stabilizer link is wasted. Good thing I got new ones. That side too. Bushings be done. Look at that big beefy stabilizer bar. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Well, none of those guys want to come free. That ain't cool. No. Denied. Well, viewers, that was a fight, and I knew it was going to be. There's a lot more stuff attached to the fuel tank than you think. So if it feels like it's giving you resistance, stop and look for stuff that might still be connected. As far as the suspension on this, well, if you live in the Rust Belt, this is what you're looking at. And this is, I've seen this on Civics, I've seen it on Integras. Uh, it's just when they get rusted up like that, what happens is the bolt goes through a bushing and then the inside of the bolt rusts to the inside of the bushing sleeve. So when you're turning the bolt, you're turning the whole bushing at the same time. 
And with an impact, it's absorbing all that impacting motion and not allowing it to come loose. So it could be torch, it could be sawzall, it could, well, medieval methods to get that the rest of the way out. But I'm gonna take a break for today, clean things up, and move along to, well, the next time we meet and see what's going on with this Integra Type R because I aim to get it done in the next couple of weeks and I hope that you're with me to see it drive away. You can always find help at ericthecarguy.com. That will be linked down in the description along with additional information, parts, tools, that type of thing. So look in the description for more information. Otherwise, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.